Hello, good afternoon. My name is Mohammed, and I'm going to explain to you how to use a homeowner accord application. Now, the first thing you need to do is basically look over the forms before you fill it in so that you get acquainted with what things you need to fill and what things you don't need to fill. So, obviously, let's go to the first page agency. So, let's say, for example, it's common sense if you're working for brokerage, let's say ABC Brokerage, that's what you put the name contact name obviously that's where you put your name so I'll put my name phone number so let's say for example let me use a random phone number fax if you have any so I'll just put the same thing as fax email address obviously let's say for example you need an email address if the underwriter needs to send you something it could always go back to your court forms and see so I'll just use a random email address again so ABC brokerage at yahoo.com now code you don't have to fill this out this is for the underwriter agency customer ID if you have one obviously you put the customer ID but that's only if you get let's say an underwriter gives you an ID back in something then you can put over here other than, that, other than that when if you're doing the first homeowners quote for one of our customers is brand new you just leave this blank carrier same exact thing you leave this blank because obviously you don't know which carrier it is you're just giving the you your you want a quote NAIC code you leave this you put the name in short so let's say the name in short is named Bobby so you put the first name last name policy number you leave it blank plan faculty effective date effective date is basically let's say for example if you if the customer wants the wants effective date of the code to be buying let's say March 2nd so put March 2nd so I'm gonna for sake of argument I want to put March 2nd 2017 effective date and expiration date obviously you put the same thing whatever the expiration date is going to be but usually you leave this blank you don't have to fill it out it's up it's an option obviously status of transaction new renew policy number so if it's a new customer you click new policy change effective date that's different if it was if you're renewing it if it's changing a policy then you put all this other than that you don't have to date agent last inspected property well this is obviously for people that are renewing it so if, if this property was inspected before if you had this customer before and you're filling out another core application because the customer doesn't like it you all you have this information where the property is inspected how long have you known the applicants well let's say for example if you had this customer for four years you put four years applicant name obviously you put his first name so let's put Bobby last name Smith Date of birth, let me make up a random date of birth. Let's put social security number. You put any social security number, so let's just sake of argument, let's put this. Marshall status, is he married, is he single, divorced, whatever it is. So let's put this guy for now, single. Applicant's mailing address. So whatever the applicant is living, let's put his mailing address over here. So let's do one, two, three, Smith Street. Let's put Brooklyn, New York, one, one, two, three, four. Now primary phone number. Which what is it? Is it a home? Is it a business? Is it a cell? So let's put cell. And obviously let's pick up the numbers as well. Seven one eight. Two two two. Two two one one. Secondary phone. If the customer has a second phone, you could always put this over here as well. Primary email address. Let's say if the person has an email address. So let's put Bobby at yahoo.com. That's his name. Secondary email address. If they have a secondary email address, let's say for example the first email address, they it didn't work out. If you send an email, the underwriter sends you an email or one of the insurance companies sends you an email, you didn't get it, you always you know, you can always have a second email for that primary person in order for them to get contact or for you to even get contact. So always have to have second things. Um, let's see, previous address. Now, years at previous if less than three years. If that person lived in the pre hand for obviously 14 years then you don't need to put this like you know like a previous address you put obviously what the 
address he has over here and you leave it now if it's less than three years then you have to put a previous address so that person could tell you know like it's like a insurance insurance requirement they want to see where you've been before just to double check everything current residence so let's say if this person uh, is living at this mailing address you could all if it's like say if, this, if their current address is the same as mailing address you just click here if not then obviously you put where the current addresses is because some people have mailing addresses different and the current address is different so if obviously for the second article let's put it's the same now is does he own the place does he own it or does it rent it obviously most homeowners are going to be owned so you click owned okay now applicants employer name and address now this is something that um, if you're getting a code you don't really need it but if you have this information it will become easier for an underwriter to you know to see you know what type of work this person is doing for the insurance requirements sometimes you know peop uh, people do a lot of dangerous jobs and everything it's just information for the insurance company to see what type of person it is so let's say for example if this person Bobby is is a carpenter so you could always put he's a carpenter and if obviously if you want to put the name and address as well you could put the name and address you know over here as well now applicants occupation actually I'm sorry this part should have been here his occupation he's a carpenter see this is what happens when you jump back and forth always double check all your work now, applicants employers name and address now what they want to know is the applicants employers name what is his name what I mean the person that he's working for so you could always put over here or whatever it doesn't you don't need to do it again for the code purposes you can leave this blank as well co applicants let's say for example the person has a second partner owns a home so you could always put let's say Bobby has Frank as his friend that owns his he's a second partner of a home so you could put co-applicants name first name middle last name then you could put their date of birth let's say uh, December 10 let's put the same thing 1991 you put a social security number as well marginal status again if he's single if he's married so let's put single co-applicants address obviously whatever he lives so one two three let's put the same thing now his phone number as well whatever it is so you can put it down so let's put seven one eight uh, secondary if they have I'm gonna leave this blank email address same exact thing you put the email address whatever it is then you go over here and you see co-applicants employers name and address same exact question what I mean whatever the co-applicants name and address is you put it right over here now this is the easy part and obviously they ask you over here if you're in current occupation you have the previous employer for the co-applicants so you put whatever years they are I mean you don't have to ask these questions again for the court purposes but if you want additional information about your client you could always do that because let's say for example if you find out if your client has a uh, uh, he's self-employed you can always go and hey, actually get his business owner policy or general liability coverage or working compensation this will actually give you as a broker as an agent to give him an additional quote for other purposes so let's if you have his home why not have his business why not have his commercial vehicle if he has one or you know etc so that's always good to have now comes to part over here coverages of liability now this is important part now some agencies for example if you work with they have a limit of their coverages so what you do is simple you ask the client or the insurer what do they want if they have previous let's if they have a previous insurance company you could always get the declaration page which is it actually describes what they have what developing they have what far they have and you can always copy and paste everything over here if you if you see the client that has another uh, let's say for example uh, wants something that's uh, more affordable you can always put the dwelling other structure personal property so let's say for example let's say a client uh, in in if they have an insurance company that the dwelling is three hundred thousand dollars you could put three hundred thousand dollars as a dwelling copy you could always do that personal property you could just if they have other personal property you could put the personal property of this so let's say for example if they want $40,000 I'm just gonna make up a random number for personal property 
I mean for other structures, I'm sorry. For personal property, you could put, let's say, 60000 Loss of use and actual loss sustained. Usually, I don't usually put anything. I just leave this blank. Blanket as well, I leave it blank. A personal liability. Now, per if you, the people, if there's new to this, personal liability is meant like, let's say, for example, if you get sued. Now, what most people, depending on their insurance policy, have a million dollars or a hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars personal liability. So it's up to that person's discretion what type of liability they want to have. So let's say, for example, the customer comes in and tells you, you know what, I want to have a uh, three hundred thousand dollars and also in personal liability. So you give them three hundred thousand dollars in personal liability. Medical payment each person. Some people want to have a thousand dollar per person. Some people want to have five thousand dollar per person. Again. It's up to the customer discretion, whatever they want. You could always recommend highest, but if they don't want highest, then it's th it's their loss. You could always recommend them. Always make sure to make them sign some type of uh, paperwork to say that, you know, I did offer them good coverage, but the customer refused. Because just in case, if you don't have anything like that, the customer could always come back to you and, you know, say that, oh, I did tell this broker or agent that, you, you know, I wanted higher coverage and, you know, it'll always end up in a lawsuit and you don't want to have that. Always best to sign paperwork, any type of paperwork that you have to show that I did offer this coverage to this client, but the client refused. It protects you from getting sued from errors in emission, and it also helps you out in the future. Usually, I click everything over here replacement cost, full value. I click development, I click contest just to leave. I just leave these plant blanks. I don't do base, wind, hail. I mean, it's up to you. I could put 2% over here depending on what it is, the amount. I just leave this theft. I don't usually fill this out for the underwriter. I just go to the next page. Now, direct, these are the billing amount. Now, it's every per, every insurance company that you work for. Actually, honestly, you don't have to put this because they usually tell you what type of bill they're going to give you. Because once you give them a quote, you'll obviously know which insurance company uh, the you know you have. And uh, that they will tell you is it going to be a direct bill it, policy? Is it going to be a direct bill account? Is it going to be an agency bill? So basically, it's not even any point to fill this out. Payment plan, the same exact thing. Every insurance company has its own payment plan, so you won't even have to fill this out because it, it doesn't matter because they're going to have their own payment plan. Payment method again. Now, depending on what type of bill you're getting, sometimes with a direct bill, basically, it's the 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 bill goes directly to the insurer you just have to collect the first pro uh, premium policy like the first policy like the direct like the deposit you have to collect and then obviously the whatever the bill is the insured gets it you don't have to do it the agency bill is basically the the customer comes in and pays you the broker or the agent the bill and you make the payment basically on the behalf or send the the, the insurance company the check so whatever it is basically that's how it works most of the time um, admitted companies are gonna be direct bill non admitted are gonna be a agency bill so to make sure you find out now mail policy too you could always pick basically if you wanted to get the mail policy insured or you could mail policy to the agent depending on which one so you could always click both you could always you know just do one it's up to you now construction type now these parts right over here all these uh, rating slash underwriting parts you have you could if, if you could go online and whichever home you're searching for you could find out what type of uh, the, the home was built when was the home built what year was it built what type of material was it built so let's say for example if I want one two three Smith Street the quote and I found online or if, if my insurer even told it's made out of frame so you click frame the siding if it's made out of stucco you click stucco other, obviously you can see there's other options as well now usage type is it a primary and secondary? Now, explaining these things will be easy. Primary is basically, let's say, the home that you live in. It's a primary home. But some people own more than one home. They have a home over eight, one in New York City. And they could have one home in, maybe in Delaware. You know, or, or maybe Massachusetts. Anywhere in the United States. 
they have a secondary home so obviously both of these things will matter so make sure you don't make a mistake of making the primary home a secondary home because insurance code is going to be different than obviously you know secondary home means you don't live there all the time but it's a second home that you visit and it's occupied on a certain day so basically if it's a primary home make sure it's a primary if it's a secondary home make sure it's secondary ask the client information when they first come in like you know is this a primary home is a secondary home always good to ask then obviously we have seasonal home and farm home seasonal is like you know you have this home but you only go visit for the, for the summer and then you come back so you know these questions always come up to so always know what type of residence is it is it a dwelling like a regular brick home or, or a regular home is it apartment obviously some homes in an apartment like a condo and co-op is it a condominium well this is self-explained is it a townhouse a row house row house basically houses are connected townhouse is somewhat like similar they're both very townhouse and row house are very similar I can distinguish at this time I'm not sure what I remember row houses are houses in a row but you can always search online like townhouse versus row house on Google and basically you'll see the difference and then this co-op so you always want to know which of these are so let, for our argument purposes it's gonna be a dwelling now housekeeping condition is it excellent is it good so let's put good for now obviously again gold roof condition good now these questions protective device now what type of device is it does it have a central smoke alarm does it have a central temperature do they have central burglar so whatever these are most because I never fill these out because a lot of my customers never have them but let's say for example they have local or uh, local right does it have smoke you have have burglar does it go to the burglar does it go to the temperature so these are the things that it's up to you know the customer you'd ask the customer and if you don't know which one are these always don't hesitate to call the underwriter and ask them that you know what where, where should I put the, 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 the central alarm like you know the customer has one obviously you want to get the information from the customer first and everything because if they do have like say a central or local or direct alarm they get a discount on the insurance policy and it's always good to have you know for the customers now the door lock now is the door has a delicate lock or do they have spring lock whatever it is most doors do have that bolt lock some might not but you know it's always good to ask the client what do they have do they have a sprinkler I guarantee most homes don't have a sprinkler maybe some people might do it does they have a partial sprinkler meaning some parts of the home have sprinklers some the whole the home doesn't have it does it have full sprinklers so this is this is the thing but before I forgot actually I forgot uh, sometimes when you buy a home you have uh, something called uh, uh, you know mortgage where obviously people buy the home people can't buy the home and they ha have a mortgage on their home so always make sure the question if they have a mortgage or not so these are the pair is it insured who's paying the home or is it the mortgagee so always ask this question as well is it, is it the home financed if the it is financed yes or no put the finance company right over here so I forgot to mention that Let's skip that part um, now obviously let's go to the uh, this part fire hydrant this is the fire hydrant now I don't usually put these questions fire station fire division unit fire division first class if they have a, that question I do ask fire instruments they have it yes or no most people do some people don't always good to ask territory fire district name fire district court primary heat from here to here I usually let the underwriter find out what it is because it's very difficult obviously to find out how many feet are you away from the fire hydrant and how far are you from the fire station i mean you could do you could use google and you could you know find out from exact you know from fire station to this but some of the questions are very complicated i usually don't fill this out just the most important part out i fill it in now the primary heat i do put it in let's say for example if they have a steam heater or something in their home you can always put that or if they have you know like people have different homes have different items so let's say they have steam heat secondary heat some people have secondary heat whatever it is you put it right over here right in this bar now roof material most roofs are made of shingle uh, shingles as a s p h a l t as all singles that's how you correct it and that's how you spell it that's how this roof is made out of distance to tidal water now you could download Google Earth 
that's one of the best things and they actually whatever the address is from there to the tidal water you can actually find out exactly how many miles and how many feet are there from so that's one of the excellent things make sure it's called google earth it's like a, uh, if you go in it's it has like a bar if you if you actually youtube this video or google earth they'll actually show you everything obviously my thing is to teach you guys how to do this so in probably in the next video i'll show it to you how to do that in the future for now let's put let's make a round guess by is 578 miles well, actually nope that's too much let's put five miles from distance to tidal water now the purchase price most of the time you'll see this online so let's say for example the purchase price was fifty thousand. purchase date again let's put today's date Now, uh, security. Is it visible from road? Most of the homes are. Is it occupied daily? If it's a primary home, yes it is. Visible to neighbors? Has to be. Wiring? Well, most customers won't know, but most of the time, either, war, well, uh, either the wiring is copper or aluminum. So let's put copper. Last inspected date? Again, most people are not going to know. So um, you have to ask them if they don't. So basically, you leave it blank because obviously they don't know. Now this is a very important: the electrical system. Is it a circuit breaker or is it fuses? Now, if you do, people that don't know circuit breakers and fuses, there's a difference. Fuses are small like bulbs they used to use back in the days. Now fuses will make your insurance premium go up. If you give a quote to a customer with fuses, it will go up. So. If a customer has fuses, don't expect the premium to be cheap. Most of the times, it will be high. Circuit breakers are obviously, obviously, you know, it's like a newer model. It's, uh, you know, it, it's less. It's cheaper. It's actually a less hazard because it uh, fuses are higher risk of getting the house burned down because you break a fuse, creates fire. So that's why it's more, more of a hazard. So I asked the question, obviously from the customer, do you have circuit breaker or fuses? And uh, whatever it is, you put it down. So let's, for now, let's put circuit breaker. Years built, obviously was, you put the years built, so put 1950 uh, rooms. You could always ask the customers, you can find online. So let's put four, four rooms. Number of families, obviously you can find this online on the internet as well. Market value, let's put 50,000 for now. Apartments again, it's like having rooms. Let's put four house number of house or residents. Now, it, it's a question where actually, the more people there are, sometimes the premium does become more. So, let's say if they have four people, it will be the premium would change. And if you the more people you add, the less the people, the less the premium. For some reason, you add like 15 people, the premium won't be the same as having four people over here. Replacement cost. Uh, you leave this blank. You don't have to worry about it. Weeks rented, you know, because this is a primary home. Uh, total living area. Again, you can find this on Google. So let's put our for argument's sake, what, eight, 1,800 square feet. Basement area, garage area. You leave this blank. You don't have to fill out. Um, if you if they have a chimney, you put one. I have no clue what this is, so I just usually put zero. Same thing with this zero. This I do ask a customer, do you have a wood stove insert? But I do I do tell them, do you have a hertz? Do you have a prefab to the customer so that you know you do you do your due diligence to asking them? Because you may, you never know, maybe they did have them and you put a zero over there. You don't want to get you know like in trouble. So wood stove insert if they don't have it, you put zero. Rating credits, they are the non-smokers. Obviously, if they are, you put non-smokers. Is it lightning protection? I don't know. Some people have some type of thing. In, you know for lightning protection like the you see like the big chicken on the top I've seen in the movies maybe something like that if they have something like that for lightning protection you put it over here is it a man security well I don't know if you if they live in a condo in a co-op maybe they do but if they're primary dwelling home some I don't know some states might have it in New York City I guarantee you no one has it in the primary home unless you're a mayor or a commissioner off-premise theft exclusion this is basically let's say for example if you have a bike and uh, or your valuables that you actually left outside in your car and your car got stolen all your items inside will be covered by off-premise theft exclusion 
So that's something you can always ask the customer, like, do you need off-premise theft exclusion or not? If they do, you give it to them. If they do, if they don't, don't even bother even asking them and explaining them. Now, the, the home, is it located in the city limits? Most homes do, but the suburbs, they don't. New York City, we're all close to the city. Is it close in fire in fire district? Most of us are within one mile of a fire department in New York City. Or some, I mean, New York City, most of us are. But if not, whatever it is, you click it. Because I'm going to use this, I'm thinking, yes, it is. In prod suburb, nope, you leave this blank. Is it a class specific? You leave this blank as well. You leave you leave it to the custom, custom, uh, underwriter. Foundation, is it open or closed? It's most of the times, the customer's not going to know. They might say open, they might say close. Um, you could, it's very difficult to find out these answers because if, you know, you're just sitting in your table, you don't know which one is which. So even the customer doesn't even know, most, most of the customers won't know. So you could just take a guess, you know, asking them, what do you think it is? And if they say open, I put open, I mean, you can't just show proof, any type of proof while the foundation's at home. So, uh, you know, if it's open, it's open, it's closed, it's closed. I mean, that's why we have an underwriter. So make sure if you do make a mistake or anything, their job is to double check everything, everything's correct or not. Now, the wiring. Um, what it is, you put the wiring over here, the number of years. Um, if the wiring is, uh, most of the time, some, some are five or 10 years. So put, let's say, we put 2005, this was wiring, the plumbing, uh, 2004 was done. Heating was 2009, roofing was brand new. So, you know, you could always put this. Now, vent class, is it resistive? Is it semi-resistive? Like some people have special windows on their, ro or no, ro or on their uh, special windows in their homes. So this basically like question for that purpose. I usually don't, I just leave everything blank over here. Storm shutters, the same exact thing for the windstorm. Do they have it, A or B? Uh, I'm not sure what Airb is. I never did this before, so I'm not gonna even comment on this. Um, now, fuel storage tank. Do they have it? Some homes do. Most homes don't. If they do, always, always ask every question. I recommend asking them and double checking. So, if they have a swimming pool, obviously, is it above ground? Is it in ground? Approve fence is it a diving board inside because that will change the premium does it have a slide if they don't you just click over here none fuel storage tanks if they don't have it you click none if they do ask these questions all these questions fuel line location is it underground through foundation ask this question again now location and schedule you just leave this blank you don't have to fill this out prior coverage if you know you fill it in if you don't just leave it blank loss history well, if you do know about the loss issue, if they say, oh, am I, how, I did have a claim, if they do tell you, you ask them the dates, the loss type, depending on loss, you put amount paid and everything, you don't usually have to fill it out, just leave it blank. Then again, you have this called optional coverages endorsement. These are all endorsements. Now, what you do is, uh, m most of them, you're not gonna, you know, obviously, you can ask them, do they have anything special they want to, you know, cover? I usually, or everyone should, give them water backup sewers. It's from their homes, like the say if they told us backed up the sewer from outside and it's coming in, that. But if they want especially other things covered, like fungus and mold, golf carts, identity fraud, or other things that are listed, you could always include it, and most of the time it's like $20, $30 extra. So it's always best to have something, you know, like if they want it. You know, builders risk theft material collapse due to hyperstack pressure. I'm not even sure what this means, but these are all something that are included. You know, like you could add them, but each thing you add, member, it's gonna raise up the premium. So always ask them what they need. If most of the times this automatically give it to them, there's always people want this, so you don't even have to ask, just give it to them. Now, these are questions with yes or no. Uh, any other insurance with this company? Well, obviously, let's put no. We just put just a big capital N. Has any coverage been declined, canceled, or renewed during the last three years? This is a question you need to ask the clients. Or if you know your client, then you don't have, you know, obviously you could fill out yourself if you know him that well. Has applicant had a foreclosure or pestilent bankruptcy? No. Uh, has applicant had a judgment or lien during the last five years? No. Any other residents not listed in application owner occupant renter? No. Has insurance transferred within the agency? That depending on if you're renewing them, maybe or maybe not. So let's put no for now. 
Does applicant have any recognition of vehicles? They give you an example like snowmobiles, dune buggies, mini bikes, ATVs, etc. If they do, obviously you just put the year, you put the make, you put the model, you put the body type, you put all these, and then you put you know yes or no. So for example, we're not gonna put no for now. During the last five years or ten years in Rhodes Island, has any applicant been indicted for or convicted of any degree of the crime or fraud bribery? Well, this again, most of the time is gonna be no. I mean, you might not have one client that might do something like this or did something like this, so you put yes. If not, then it's no. Any business conducting the premises on the home? Is it a farming business? Is it a telecommuter business? Is it a daycare of children? Is it a home office business? Whatever it is. For now, they're just living there. You just put no. If it is, then you just click on this button, daycare number of children, and then, you know, or is it a telecommuter, whatever the case is, you just start putting down the question. Okay, any residence employee, let's say for example, if you have old parents living in, in the home and there are other people like the caretakers take care of them, if they do, you put them over here and you see how many full-time, part-time and everything, just fill out the questions basically. Any flood brush forest landslide near the area? No. Are they animals or exotic pets? Now, this is very important, one of the important questions. Now, if there are some animals like a Rottweiler or, or you know, or German Shepherd. There's some dogs, cats, snakes that the insurance company don't want them. You basically, it's best to ask them the question, do you own any type of animal? Any type. They have to tell you that. I mean, you you, you don't know, obviously as brokers slash agents, we don't know who's selling us the truth or not. Because the inspector will go Sometimes, you know, once you buy the coverage and everything, the inspector is going to go and expect the home from the outside. Some inspectors might see something from the outside that might say, you know what, this person has a dog, but wasn't listening to the documents. Guess what? That policy, there might be a re-inspection or that Paul inspector might say some comments or something, and then, you know, you might end up losing your insurance policy. That's towards the customer. Not saying that, you know, brokers or agents, you know, like, it's their mistake, part mistake. It's not, but, you know always ask the question from the passenger you, you know you sure you don't have any type of pets obviously the first time you ask them they can give you the answer so let's put for now no uh, is property situation more than one acre well if it is if you put down there if not then you you do all this any corrected pipe or building core violation uh, i don't think so you just put no is a dwelling home for sale well if it is well, guess what you don't have to explain everything no explanation required you put no for now. It's probably within 300 feet of commercial or non-residential property. Now, here's the thing. Some homes are located close to a resident uh, commercial homes. Now, if you're in a commercial district, commercial homes, you're probably going to be in a high-risk area with premium. Why? Because, you know, they say that if you're, let's say, if you're living, uh, uh, if you're, if you're living in a building apartment, let's say, for example, you know, that, that for you, it's a primary dwelling, you live there and everything, but underneath it, there's a, there's, there's a, it's a daily. There's a chance of a home getting burned down or getting to fire because of the daily, because they cook food and everything, obviously, fire hazard. So because of that, it will change the premium. So that's what the question is asking. Is it a home within a commercial run residential property? And if yes, this is one to describe. Then obviously you have to describe. Oh yes, it is within 300 feet of property because uh, 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 I'm underneath underneath me. Uh, it's a deli or it's a it's a sandwich shop where they cook food and everything. And, you know you have to explain. So you put no for now. Is there a trampoline on the premises? I have no clue why they ask this question. Some people do have trampoline, but majority of us, I guarantee, we don't have trampoline. Uh, was the structure originally built for other than a private residence and converted? No. Any lead paint? Now, we all know the series of lead paint. Uh, if it is a lead paint, then you ask the cl client, do you have any lead paint in the home? They probably might not know, but that's, again, that's inspector's job that inspect the home. And they might tell you, yes, they're rich, and yes, they're not. For now, if they say no, you put no. If they say yes, then explain what it is. Is is a, if a fuel tank on premises, is if a fuel tank is on premises, has any other insurance been obtained from the tank? Well, if it is, then you put insurance company limited and cleanup sublimit. If not, then you put no. Most of us will have no. 
If a building under construction, the applicant, general contractor. Well, if it is under construction, then you complete all these nice things. If not, then you just put simple as no. Oh, forgot this question. Is the residence in a gated community? You put no. If it is, then you put yes. It's very easy to skip a question because because of the, there's so many questions. It's always best to you know read each question properly. Is there a carbon monoxide alarm in operating condition with a mandated number of feet of every room for sleeping purposes? If they do, obviously you put yes. Well, for our purposes, every room does have a mo carbon monoxide detector. We put yes. Is the name insured the owner of the property? Well, if it is, you put yes. If it is no, then you explain why. Is there a manager on the premises? Some now some people have property managers. If they are, then you put the property manager's name and his phone number and everything. If not, then you put no. Is there a security attendant? Well, self-explanatory. Is the building entrance locked? Of course, it has to be locked. Okay. In additional interest. Now, are the other people the additional interest? Uh, say, for example, some mortgagee are the interest party, or there's a trustee, or there's a lien holder, or there's an additional insured. Whatever it is, you put. So, you, and whatever it is, you put, just put the name and address of that person. Whatever and you put over here. Then you put the interest in number, item numbers, whatever it is. If it's a vehicle, you put vehicle. It's a location, you put a location. Is an item, you put an item. So basically, that's what the question is asking. Most of the time, it's going to be just leave this blank. Now these are the questions where you could put your remarks and everything. This is telling you like, you know, do you have any type of earthquake application? Do you want any flood exclusion notice? This I don't usually just leave it blank. I don't usually fill this out. This is a remark page. So you tell the underwriter this is a quote. Make sure you tell them that because they might not they might not read this part. If you just send it like this, they might think it's you have to bind it and they bind it and you end up you have to uh, you know, you might get in trouble. Because you know this is a policy where the customer already has it, and you find it by accident. Just let the underwriter know this is a quote uh, for. I think I named this person Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Um, and whatever information you want, additional information you want to give to the underwriter, or any specific things, or any questions that you didn't understand, you know, just tell them this thing, and you know, obviously you go whatever it is, you just fill it out. That's what the box is for. Effective date. Now let's say for example effective date. If you want the uh, effective date to be, um, let's say, again whatever you want to, March second, twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen, you put the effective date right over here. Expiration date again, you could just leave this blank. Whatever time, whatever it is, coverage is not found. You just leave it like that. You don't have to fill that out. So and you just, this is all fancy stuff saying that you know you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to click this. Yes, you give the copy of this information. Privacy has been given to the applicant. App, applicant signature, and then you fill out.